Get 84% off in four months for free of Surfshark VPN, guys, by using code INCON. Check out the link down below in the description to help support the twitchiest community. Hello, everybody. We are here with your and her <clears throat> ADC guide. And her right now, uh, one of the most popular ADCs in the game. I would put him in the top three. Uh, right now, you usually see um, and her, Rama, and Cupid. Those tend to be the three uh, hunters right now that you're seeing at high level ranked. High level ranked hunters also don't tend to get banned right now because everything is really leaning in towards the healers uh, and those abusive uh, assassins with sledge and stuff. So we're going to be taking Anher over to the duel lane, starting off with our Hunter's Blessing. Tier 1 going into our Devourer's Gloves. Three health pots, a multi-pot. And we're going to be getting our Impale at level 1. On Anher, your goal is to be aggressive. Anher's play style, kind of similar. Uh, kind of similar to Uller, in that you have to play confident. If you're not playing confident on him, you're missing out on the entire point. So you can actually go extremely aggressive on Anher. We have a Sylvanas. I'm actually going to give him the purple buff uh, to help out with the clear. And then we're going to do this Alpha Harpy, and we're going to get ourselves over to the lane. Now, they didn't do the Alpha Harpy, so we're actually going to rotate back around, and we're going to play this safe. They went directly to the lane, and depending on how they did the Ghost Creep, they'll hit level 2. No, they did not. So if they would have gotten uh, only one of them got the Ghost Creep XP, so let's say only Capri got the Ghost Creep XP, then they would have actually gotten him level 2 right there, and they probably could have gone for a bit of an engage. I'm going to save my Impale right now. We're clearing these creeps pretty fast. I'm going to wait for Sylvanas to use an ability. He did. I'm going to jump right in towards this Neat. We're going to get some nice damage off there. And Kepri and Neath are going to be kind of zoned out into the jungle. And they should miss out on a decent bit of XP right here. On my way. So jumping in on a lot of gods is typical. Wow, what a good flip and pull. Uh, jumping in on a lot of gods is usually not considered to play. Uh, and her one of the exceptions to the rule, they have recently buffed his jump. That reason buff to the jump means it's actually pretty consistent that you can hit the knockup from it. Which really lets you play aggressive. Because uh, it sets up your impale perfectly. So you jump in, you land on him, you get yourself an auto attack in, then you impale, and then you auto attack again. Of course, always trying to get those auto attack cancels out. As long as I'm not getting too beat down by the archers, I also don't mind just kind of zoning out from the wave. Now, I got to be careful against this Neath around those weaves to make sure that I don't give him a free route. And I also need to be careful around the towers because if I do something crazy like a jump in and then the Kepri plucks me, well, he can pull me right underneath that tower and get me killed. Their purple is up. It's always risky going for the enemy purple at this stage of the game if you don't know where the jungler is. But with a Sylvanas and an Anher, we've got so much clear in the lane that their dual lane can't contest at all. And so even if the jungler did rotate over, we would have ourselves uh, basically a 2v1 against their jungler. And now that we did their purple, we're going to go straight back and do our purple. Make sure you spread the love in the duo lane. If you get both purple buffs, make sure you both don't take it. Because if you both take the purple buff, uh, or if one of you takes both of them, you're actually missing out on penetration. Purple buff auras do stack. So purple buff gives you that attack speed as well as that reduction. Wow, what a good pull. In uh, aura protections by 10. That 10 does double stack, so when you have two of them by, that's actually a 20 reduction in protections, which is super good, especially at this stage of the game, but really all the time. I'm gonna do a little impale that combo right there. Unfortunate. A lot of people think that you have to be able to hit the raw 
impale pillar combo on Anher for him to be good. You really don't. Like, yes, you would like to be able to fairly consistently hit that combination of abilities. But if you suck at landing the uh, pillar impale combo, it's honestly okay. It's not the end all be all uh, for Anher. It's not like not hitting an Uller Axe or something. You can just use your impale off of your jump or just use it by itself for the poke. You don't have to land that every single time. I'm actually gonna jump in on this Neath. I'm waiting for him to backflip. And then I'm gonna use my pillar to slow him down. And then my impale to finish off the kill and get us that nice first blood. So I misplayed that just slightly. I was trying to throw down the pillar so that he would backflip. And the second that he landed, he would actually be stuck on the pillar. It was just an inch too far away, so he actually jumped right behind the pillar. Uh, but luckily, the slow was still enough to get the kill. Jump out of the base so you can get back to lane quickly. And we're grabbing our Devo gloves first. You always want to get the Devo gloves first in the duo lane if you can right now. Sometimes you have no choice. Say you're on a god with no movement at all, uh, and you're scared about getting ganked. Maybe you've already gotten ganked. Every once in a while, you do have to go and get your boots first. But when at all possible, especially if you're winning the light, make sure that you get yourself that Devo gloves first because you want to get it to start stacking. Once we start getting these stacks up, presumably the Neath is probably going to go Transcendence. So I'm not like competing directly uh, in stacks like he would uh, be most of the time in dual lane. But regardless, getting your stacks started earlier is better than getting your stack started later. Attack. So I'm just going to impale him away from me right here. The Capri is coming in. You can see that the Capri wants to ult this. I'm not even gonna chase this out. I'm actually just gonna continue to get my farm. Capri ult being down. Neath took a ton of damage. He's probably gonna have to back. Either way, that's a win. Something you're gonna see a lot of in duo lane is last hitting. Now in MOBAs like League of Legends, in MOBAs like Dota, you see last hitting because you get so much more gold for last hitting slash it's the only way to get gold. Um, in smite you actually get a lot of the gold without last hitting that's not why you see last hitting done you see last hitting done to bring people out of position so usually you're gonna end up killing the melee creeps because your melee creeps will run under tower reminder that if a np if a, if a minion gets hit by the tower you will miss yes. out on most of the gold for that minion. So you don't want him to go under tower and get Enemy shot. Attack. But you do want to keep them close to your tower. That's too bad. So that way the Neath has to sit all the way up here. And she's very susceptible to a jungler gank. Reminder, you do actually need to get the last hit in order to stack your Devo gloves. Now, if he uses an ability just like that, actually, I'm going to be able to go aggressive on this. This is actually awkward. Those minions so perfectly lined up in front of me and I didn't land the impale. That's okay. If I ever see him use abilities like that, I'm going to go aggressive on him every single time on Anher. He's missing out on some XP back here. Now, I don't want to miss out on these last hits, so I'm going to make sure to get these, even though it's going to push up the wave a little bit. There's no eyes on the Neath. She's probably rotating. Because the Neath is probably rotating, I'm going to full clear this all the way. And then I'm going to head over towards my purple buff. Now, one thing with Anner that you get to do as well is you get to use your ultimate kind of willy-nilly, and that's because it is such a low cooldown. So I don't want to miss out on this next wave, but I know that I have to back in order to get my full boots. So I'm going to back up. In this case, I'm going to wait for that new wall to hit me so I can regen it back up, and I'm going to start heading back to lane. Anher's baseline cooldown is only 75 seconds, which means we can actually get away with using his ultimate in PvE in order to get back, in order to not miss out on any more XP. I wouldn't just use it for the funsies, but in this case, I'm using it so I can get back to lane faster, so I didn't miss out on half of that wave. If I would have done that, I would have missed out on the whole wave. 
Now I am going to continue to last hit this. I also want to get some wards out. A rally so I'm going to throw a ward out deep right there. I'm going to make sure I get my Devo stocks here. And we're going to keep letting this last hit. So that way as many minions die as possible. So the Neath doesn't get credit for them. And I also keep myself from pushing up all the way into our tower. Now Ratatasker is actually down by our red buff. So I'm going to back up off this. And I'm going to start running over here to try to help. I'm going to pillar off this Capri. That is Capri. Oh, baby. That's a 1 HP Capri. I got to be careful. They are so low on so many people right now. Neath backflip is down. I'm going to try to get him with my impale combo. We will get his beads right there. I'm going to auto attack. Jump. And then I should be able to auto one more time and pick up that kill. Ratatasker's come all the way back for the pooch. He's going to have to run this way, so I'm just going to try to catch him with the impale and grab the kill. I saw the Guan Yu on the map coming over. I'm going to immediately reset back to my lane and go back for farm. I can see that there's a huge wave over there. For our level order on Anher, we grab our ultimate whenever we can. Then we get our impale to max. Our one, and finally, our jump. So that minion right there at the end, I got full credit for that minion. A lot of people think that if a minion is under tower that you do not get full credit for him. That is not true. If a minion gets hit by the tower, you do not get full credit for them. So you could have a whole wave under tower and you got that one big minion just sitting there tanking it for the, the other creeps. You can kill all those other creeps. And then you can still get full gold credit for them, even though they were underneath your tower. Now, Neath saw me, but I saw her. The second I see him, I'm going to jump in on him and go for a very aggressive play here. That's his backflip down. I'm just going to zone him out from these creeps. I'm basically full stacked. I'm going to stay away from his weave. I'm going to throw down my pillar to try to body block him out. And then I get to hold down the W key and we get to take him out. When he's dead, I don't mind full pushing up these waves because I want to go into the jungle. And I want to look for any sort of bonus farm. For our lane matchups on Anher, one of the reasons why he's so popular right now is because of how good he is into the other meta matchups. Specifically, I'm referring to Rama and Cupid. Rama will outclear you on Anher, but he won't necessarily uh, be able to 1v1 you for a very, very long time. Uh, you basically just take the fight to the Rama in the lane over and over again, and you should be able to beat him in the lane. If you get to the ultra late game, Rama carry will start to come online. You'll have a little bit of a harder time. And the other matchup that's really common right now is Cupid. And her has always been a counter matchup to Cupid because if Cupid ults, all you simply do is use your own ultimate. And not only are you doing a bunch of damage to him, but you're also CC immune walking right out of his ulti. Super easy to avoid that altogether. It also means you can still use your jump aggressively against the Cupid, even though he's got that giant circle because you can walk out of it with your ulti proc. Now I'm going to focus on this tower first. The second I get this tower, I'm going to start going aggressive for the Neath. I'm going to wait for him to backflip. I'm going to go jump right into him as soon as he does, and I'll immediately be able to pick up that kill. You never, ever want to let up the pressure on Anher. Uh, Anher really does not have any weaknesses right now in terms of 1v1s. The god that would probably give you the most difficult time in lane is going to be Uller, and that is because Uller is just as aggressive as you are, and so a lot of that matchup is going to come down to whoever gets the first kill in the lane and then starts to snowball out of control. For our third item this game, we are going an item that I do specifically like on Anher, and that is going to be a third item fail not. So a lot of the times you'll see, see people go third item Atalanta's bow on Hunters right now. I do not like third item Atalanta's bow. I like fourth item Atalanta's bow. Every single game, fourth item, I grab Atalanta's bow. But I do believe that that third item is enough away from the team fight stage of the game where you're going to be fighting the super tanks like the solo laners.
Goodbye, that you can now. actually get away with going a more situational item. For me, this usually means Oboe, Fail Not, uh, Icky Vol, or Kin. A lot of those items are going to be included in your build Retreat. anyway. Enemies so it's just a matter of where you want to grab them. But on Anher and other super cooldown heavy, or excuse me, super ability based hunters, I like the Fail Not. The Fail Not is going to give me 20% CDR, which is awesome. It's going to give me 10% pen, which is going to scale great into the ultra late parts of the game. Deploying sentry. It gives me power, and it's going to give me a little bit of crit chance. Now, right now in the hunter meta, crit is not something that you really build. It is not super common. Uh, and the reason is because of this extremely tanky meta that we are currently in. But just having a little bit of crit is fine. We're not going to continue to spec into crit at all. We are not going uh, to continue that any further. It's just going to give us that little bit of RNG, particularly after our ultimate, which is such a strong ability on Anher. Going to give us that little bit of RNG to grab a crit, which can help us grab that kill we wouldn't have necessarily gotten otherwise. Now that I've got the tier two tower down in the duo lane, it's gonna be time for me to really start rotating across the map. Some hunter players like to rotate a little bit earlier. Me personally, I like to put my head down and farm and play it a little bit more like the solo lane, grab a massive lead, and then start to rotate around the map or even do things like solo objectives. A team fight is starting to break out near the mid lane though, so I'm gonna start heading over. I do have to keep in mind that I don't have my Atalanta's bow online yet. I will be getting that momentarily, but until I do, a target like a Guan Yu could be problematic for me, although it does look like he also lost over in the solo lane, so we, I've got a large XP advantage on him. Your standard ability combinations on Anner are just gonna be you jump in and then you impale. If you're not comfortable with going for the jump and the impale, if you need to save your jump, then you go for the pillar first, then impale, and you try to impale them into the pillar. Regardless of what you're doing, you're trying to auto attack in between everything that you do. So whether you're gonna impale, you walk right on up, you auto attack, and then you impale, you auto attack, and then you run, you auto attack, and then you jump. Doesn't matter, always make sure you're factoring in those auto attacks in between your abilities. A lot of people think about uh, ability canceling as like an assassin thing, but it is also a hunter thing too. Got to grab this mid tower for my team, and I'm going to try to go really aggressive on this. Unfortunately, the Guan Yu was right around the corner, which is a bit of a bummer, and so is the Ratatasker. They had four people in the mid lane. I wanted to just grab that tower and then go immediately aggressive onto the new one, but they actually had four people there. What are you going to do? So we're going to get ourselves an Atalanta's bow, and we're going to get a Sentry Ward online. Neath is just kind of sitting over in the duo lane by herself, trying to get her farm back up, as she should be doing. For our next item, we want to make sure we always look at the enemy god build to see what they're doing. So Guan Yu has a little bit of physical defenses. He's going a pretty standard build. Kepri's got a lot of physical defenses. We've got two tanks, three people pretty squishy right here, and I've got a nice level lead. Because of that, instead of getting a Kins right here in order to deal with the tankier characters, I'm actually going to go into a Oboe, which is going to be better for the general team fights that we're gonna be getting ourselves into, getting some of that damage spread around onto all of the characters. After that oboe, we will then sell our Hunter's Blessing and get ourselves kin. For gods that you like to pair up with oh, and her in lane, I prefer other aggressive supports. Because Anher is so uh, important to play aggressive in the laning phase, I like to pair him with a god like a Sobek, like a Ymir, somebody that either is going to have a lot of lane clear to kind of make up for some of the lane clear that Anher is uh, lacking, and Ares is a great god to pair with him. On my way. Or something that can just immediately go for the fight. Uh, something like a Sobek can just go right for those fights and do so incredibly well. This is actually really good body blocking right there uh, by the Guan Yu trying to keep his guy alive. So I'm going to run right into this fight as aggressive as I can. The second that Neath is down from her 
jump. I tried to hit him with the impale. I couldn't quite reach. I definitely am going to jump over this wall and continue this fight. I'm looking for the Capri. I'm going to try to block him off with my pillar. Impale him right back into this bubble block. And now he's got nowhere to go. Guan Yu's trying to come back in and save him. You can see these little random crits popping up. Those little random crits, we love those with a fail nut. Right? They're not consistent. If somebody pops a thorns, it's not going to be the end all be all for you because you're not going to crit every auto. But just every once in a while, it adds a little mmm, 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 just a little um. Especially against the other squishies, it can really catch them off guard. And it's not like anybody is going to build a spectral armor to counter a hunter that built a single crit item. So it also prevents you from getting counterbuilt in that crit department. Now, Oboe is a pretty cheap item, so I'm going to be able to back up, grab the Oboe, and we should head right over to the Fire Giant. That is the correct call. So I wouldn't recommend pairing something like a Gab with Anher. Gab is a lot more focused on keeping somebody alive uh, in those team fights. He pairs a lot better with a more late game hunter or even a hunter that doesn't have a good escape, like uh, Artemis or something that'll really turn online if you can make it to like the 30, market, 30 minute marker, but chances are she won't make it to that point and that's why she needs the help. Anher, we want aggressive. Speaking of aggressive, the team went for the fire giant without me, which is pretty aggressive. Guan Yu is just diving in the back lines. I'm going to try to get right back on him. As and her, you can actually peel a little bit. I know it's kind of funny to think about a hunter as a uh, peeling target, but you really can meet because of your pillar that body blocks and because of the amount of CC in your kit, you can actually provide a good amount of peel for your team so if you see somebody particularly your mage is in a lot of trouble you can always try to turn around and help them out now i don't want to get too greedy here so i'm going to keep going back to farming make sure you're never chasing too far we've got two people dead i think i can walk up and grab this tier two tower although admittingly the last time i tried to go grab a tower didn't work out so well but you know live and learn all right, new ones coming right over for me. So funny that they're all here again. What is the clinketing? Use my ulti to make sure I didn't get stunned by the new wall combo. Gonna go ahead and use my beads here to make sure I can put down that neat. Gonna try to jump myself away and then turn around and get these Devo gloves healing me up. I see that there's a blue buff up, so I'm gonna walk over to the blue buff, start healing myself off of this, and then I'm gonna walk myself back towards that fire giant. Get to my Sylvanas for the heals and head back over to the fire. On Anher, most of your stuff will go through walls. Uh, your Impale does not. So you can throw your pillar over a wall to body block people. You can throw your ulti and your jump and all this good stuff. But your Impale has got to be used right on in front of you. Anher is also a very good pick right now into a lot of the meta god in the jungle. So a lot of the junglers you're seeing right now, uh, picked and banned is gods like Suki, okay. Set, Nemesis. These characters that are really uh, all up in your face uh, and they help prevent you by getting away by just kind of being able to chase you down. Attack left lane. That being able to chase you down is Attack actually what Anher thrives at preventing. Yeah. Because you have one a leap to get over a wall, step one, already great. Puts you in a better position over most hunters. Step two, you've got a displacement with your impale. Step three, you've got a displacement with your leap if you so choose to use it aggressively. Step four, you've got CC immunity built into your kit on your ultimate. In step five, you can put down a pillar which puts down a literal physical wall in between you and an enemy god as well as the fact that you can use it as the slow as well so he actually does really well into all these gods and he has no problem this is the pretty standard hunter build outside of the fail knot he loves this type of build gonna use my pillar to kind of keep him back there i see the ratatasker is dashing into me i'm pretty sure he's gonna go for the stun so i just use my ulti for that cc immunity and we can pick up a couple of kills Tier 2 tower is still up middle, so we're going to start heading ourselves over there. I do not have my actives up, so I'm going to be playing back pretty far. 
uh, compared to how normally aggressive I'd be playing him. I'm gonna let my team get in front of me until at least my beads come back up. Now with this build as well, we've got 30% pet with the fail knot and the Atlantis boat. So we do lots of damage, lots of damage uh, to towers. And Phoenix, as you can see, we're hitting it for 212 damage. We grabbed the mid Phoenix. Now we're gonna head over to the left-hand side. Left-hand side Phoenix is the most important Phoenix in the game. It is the farthest away from the fire giant. Enter your wanna, want, wanna take that before you take the right side Phoenix. Always get the one farthest away from fire when you can. We need to be a little careful right here. This is where people tend to get overly aggressive and dive into a Titan room. We need to path ourselves right over to the right hand side and continue to get the Phoenixes. My job as the ADC is to get these Phoenixes first. I'm throwing down my pillar pretty deep uh, in order to zone out anybody that's trying to path themselves in to defend this Phoenix. And so we're gonna be able to grab it for free. The second Guan goes to land down on me. I have my ultimate prepped and ready so I can grab that kill. Gonna try to pillar him so he can't get into the fountain and I'm actually gonna be able to grab that kill onto Guan Yu. I pillar him which body blocks his way to the fountain. I know exactly where he's going to land because of the uh, Capri ultimate just showing itself and we'll be able to grab yet another kill. Afterwards, when we would have gotten our speed put online, we would have sold our ninja tabi. And then we have a truly situational item here in our build. You can grab something, uh, depending on the god that you're on, I wouldn't do this on Anher, but I do want to mention it. A silver branch bow is actually a pretty good situational item right now on gods that have auto attack speed stims in their kit. Because we had a fail knot, we do have the option of grabbing something like a late game crit item, something like a wind demon in order to give us that 10% pen and crit or even something greedy like a death ringer. We've also got options to get ourselves more percent health items like a heart seeker on hand hurt, which will once again give us that pen going into the ultra late game for 40%. Plus it'll give us that extra damage on our abilities, which matters on and her because of his impale and because of his ultimate can actually add a good bit of damage against ultra tanky targets into the super late stages of the game guys. And that is our and her ADC guide.